So I think it's important to allow people uh, the, the choice as to where they want their taxes to go. I think that um, redirecting uh, money from defence budgets away from defence budgets is an important part of that, but I think it goes much wider than that as well. So for me this is a, a, a not a specific issue about peace building, that's one part of a general issue about giving people more control, more of a say about where their tax money goes and how it is spent. Um, redirection of your taxes has a very long tradition. I'm doing some work on the suffragettes and they did that too in the 1880s and 1890s up to the point where they were declared bankrupt and their furniture was physically taken away from them. But in the end, it did change something because they said, you know, no taxation without representation. I don't want to pay for this. And also the public is not involved in the decision where to, um, Britain goes to war with. So, as long as I don't have a decision on that, and I would of course not go to war at all, I don't want to pay for it. So that's why I support this bill. Basically, for many of us, military expenditure in the world has been far too high for too long. And um, even today, Britain has the highest uh, military spending in Europe. Higher than Germany, higher than France. So why need it to be so high? There's also another reason behind all this, which is if only there could be a shift in the world of 2015, 2020, to forms of alternative to military approaches to security, what some of us call human security, or to efforts of peace building, peacekeeping, uh, it would be a more efficient use of resources. I think it would allow the people of the world much more of a say in what's going on and that would advance the cause of peace because I think that most people really don't want war when it gets right down to it or have much more of a hesitancy about war so, uh, in the, among the general public. So I think it would, uh, it would advance the cause of peace and it would help uh, bring about uh, a lot less war, a lot fewer wars. Um, I'm from Germany. I remember when um, the German parliament didn't go to war in Iraq, um, whereas a lot of other people uh, did. Um, Germany was so happy um, to be, you know, just to, to say, no, we're not part of this. So um, I just remember how grateful people were. And um, it's only not even 100 years since the first, second, first war and 75 years since the Second World War. It's just important that things like these are prevented and um, less wars make for less escalations of wars. Um, and what do you think is the significance of the work that Conscience is doing? Um, apart from the peace tax bill, they do so much more work. Um, they lobby here in Parliament um, about everything related with peace. They um, have this wonderful event today where there's an actual debate about peace. And as long as they just, through this work of lobbying and organising events, um, get people to think about war and peace and conflict prevention and all that, that's very important, great work. Well. I think it would be a major, uh, major impact and positive. The point is that at the moment, uh, whatever it is, 90% of expenditure on security issues is in the form of military armaments and so on and so forth. And we only have to look at the Iraq, other countries to send Libya and so forth to see that it's been so one-sided. When most of us are not saying there should be no military spending at all, though it's a more realistic opportunity than many people realize. But if there was some shift in the balance away from military and armies to all sorts of other actions, it would be more in line with uh, not only British interests, but UN calls, UN systems. Well, I think it's the only group that has actually got a specific proposal. We have heard this evening from John McDonald that uh, there was big efforts made um, eight or ten years ago 
there's going to be another effort to try and get it through the House. And apparently as many as 49 MPs have actually at different times said they support it. Very good proposal. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Prevention is always better, cheaper, faster than cure. Of course it's cheaper. It's cheaper in money, it's also cheaper on life count and um, uh, why should we have a war if we could prevent it? I, I saw that in my own experience because I worked 20 years for the UN, for UNICEF, the Children's Fund, and we had experiences uh, in, um, in Iraq, in uh, El Salvador, in uh, Uganda, uh, in Lebanon, which in the name of children we asked for all sides in the warring situation to have days of tranquility in order that children could be immunized and protected from the worst of it. And it worked. Indeed, the House of Lords at one point asked a resolution congratulating UNICEF on these initiatives. We're not talking pie in the sky, we're talking about things that can actually work and have. And finally, if you had one question for the Prime Minister, what would it be? Um, why he doesn't promote education in the world more as another way to prevent conflict. Oh, well, what I would say to the Prime Minister is please consider the, uh, the effect that giving people more control and more power over their tax money in general, and defence budget in this case in particular, would give and uh, the benefits that that would bring to the country. When and how do you think you will have a better balance of the budget for military aid and diplomacy? So instead of spending 95% on the military or 80%, there's a better balance between other means rather than uh, towards human security and a more balanced world.